Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to write well. What must one do? Okay. To write well. You know, you know, there's, 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 some, there's so many ways of explaining what writing well is, you know. I, if it is writing English, you know, or if it is writing journalistic writing. Writing English. We are talking, we are talking English yeah. now. Yeah. So the most important thing is that the number one thing is to master your language. That's the number one thing. You can never write in a language that you cannot dominate. So you must master your language. And you start mastering your language from kindergarten. You start mastering your language from what you read. You know, if you don't, those who read more, write better. Those who read less, write less. Let me put it that way, you know, for a better word to use. But um, I think the number one thing is to master your language and then read, read, and read. Then, if you're doing fiction, you know, you must try to learn the art of um, imagination. Because if, you, if, you, if you're weak in imagination, your fiction will be purely repertorial, purely journalistic, you know. And at the end of the day, we win awards, we win this, but you know that, there is, that if art does not create something new, you know, art for me, has failed. Art has to be able to uh, create a pathway for science, you know, to follow. So, which means that the artist should die in his imagination, die deep, dig deep, come up with ideas and concepts, you know, that will challenge those that are reading it. So that that's 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 my view of writing. Yeah. All right. Now, the 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 interest in writing. What would you say triggered it in you? Okay, it was the June 12th, um, when June 12th happened. Remember, my birthday was June 13th. So June 12th happened in 1993. I was a young art executive, and there were riots everywhere. You know, Lagos was uh, on a lockdown, you know, you know and um, there was nothing. I wake up in the morning, there was nothing I could do. And I realized that I was wasting myself and I hated doing nothing. So what I did was like, there was this malam in front of um, our house then in Assumption Ibarra, you know, so Larry, I bought um, an 80 leaves note from him and a pen. Then I started and I wrote my first sentence. After writing my first sentence, I think the muse, muse took over and then I, I, I within a year, I had the. Um, I, I had I had written manuscript as thick as you can imagine, and then from there later uh, came my trilogy: Pregnancy of the God, Treasure in the Winds, and Pride of the Spider Plan. So these are actually, these are actually how I started writing, and I will tell you that I had this. Um, that, that's actually how it started. It was in twelve. Yeah. Mm. All right. Now with the Benefit of hindsight, what would you say uh, is the commonest mistake that most writers make, or any writer can make? Well, I, you know, it, well, you, you know, the, the thing there is that um, what is very common is that a lot of people overrate themselves, you know, and it's natural for a an individual who has created something that is very, very, if he feels is very, very good, you know. Um, not to think that he or she is um, wonderful, you know? uh, but you, you the, 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 it's so that's the first mistake a lot of us make, you know. But because when I started produ pro producing works, I realized that I needed to know what it's all about, and that's where my profession as an advertising person helped me because uh, in advertising you have to do a lot of research. You know, there's no there's no brief that gets to you that you can execute without research. So because of that, I started researching writing. You know, in researching writing. You know, getting books. You know, I'll go to my NIA library. And I remember one particular book I read that said on becoming a writer. 
you know after reading that book cover to cover you know i learned a whole lot you know you know not just on storytelling but on the craft of writing okay now to write award-winning books what must one do <laughs> no writer will tell you that he, he sits down to write award-winning books no uh, what happens is that if you tell, tell an authentic story if you tell an authentic story and you, as a writer, are satisfied with what you have written. That, that's the number one person. If you're satisfied with what you have written and you think it is good enough, then that's the first stage. The next stage is to, is to, is to flip your mind and be your worst critic. You know, when you, when you become your worst critic, you go back to your sentences and look at them. After going through them and then you ask yourself, what I'm writing? Is, will it be easy for people to read? Will it be easy for people to understand? You know, is it I because I, I wrote it? Yes, so I understand. What will others be able to? By the time you get through all this, you write something that is readable, that is satisfying, that is uh, that is communicating. However, that a book wins award is seventy percent luck, you know, and thirty percent every other thing. So that a book does not win an award, does not make it a bad book. It depends on the judgment of the judges. It depends on what the judges want out of the book. It depends on the, what the, the rules have been set that they want to use in measuring who is better than the other. So the books that are not written that way. I remember my second novel, Treasure in the Winds. You know, Treasure in the Winds, um, where, where I was trying to do something crazy, you know, something that had never been done by any writer. And I, I went a, and because I, I didn't have a human hero in the book, I had a, um, the flute as a hero. And then, so in, to prove that it, it wasn't a human hero, there was one of my characters I was actually trying to, um, to dominate the book, to become the hero of the book. I killed the character in the middle of the book. And when I killed the character in the middle of the book, that some judges felt it was damn that how could you do that? Where is it done? Nobody's following the book to be the hero killed in the middle of the book. <laughs> so so um, I, you know, so that that's that's it. So that's just the way it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So what, what what do you like most about being a writer? Oh boy, the attention they sweet though. <laughs> the attention they sweet, but, but having said that, what I enjoy the most being a writer is the fact that you have created, you have created, um, you have created a universe. From that book, you could get cartoon. A cartoon could be made for little children. From that book, a movie. Could be made. For this book, a textbook could be used by students. From that book, a color book could be made for children. A whole lot that a single book can provide. And moreover, it gives you the opportunity to document some part of our history that are lost. Things that could have easily been forgotten. You know, when you watch movies, people just watch it and and when they watch another one, they forget the other one. But books always keep these things because of their nature, you know. So I think a book, being able, write, being able to do this is actually, I, I see myself as a, you know, as, as, as somebody that is enjoying the privilege of having a God gene because you are creating something that will outlive you. Okay. So what don't you like about being a writer? What did what? What don't you like? What do you dislike about being a writer? <laughs> the it's is the if there's anything I don't like about being a writer, it is when you finish telling the story, making it, it right. That is making it the, the way you the, the the whole editing process. You know, it's very 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 time consuming and. Um, that when you are working on the book, it takes so much of you, you know, and before you, because you, before you give it to an editor, you must have satisfied yourself. That's actually where the work is. 
and because I it's not just that I am living in one island, you know, uh, roll, you know watching the <laughs> the seas roll, and then I write, and at the end of the day, you know, but no, I do my nine to five, you know, so and I have to do my work as a, you know, I have to do my work as an ad man, and then I have to do my work as a writer, but I think it's actually that part of it, but the truth is that it's like a woman who is um, pregnant towards the last, the last two months or even the last two weeks or the last month of our pregnancy. It's usually very, very painful and difficult. But the joy that comes with birth, you know, is the same thing for a writer. When the book is in your hand, you forget all the pains that you use, that, that you spent in you know, writing. Yeah.